today to address several charges that have been brought against the profession of pharmacy. What sort of charges? Lack of cost effectiveness, protectionism, malingering. Malingering? It says here, Your Honor, that pharmacy has been at, stuck at some crossroads for about 300 years. That sounds like aggravated malingering. How many pharmacists are named in this charge? Looks like darn near every one of them, Your Honor. Let me see that. against pharmacy? We have several witnesses, Your Honor. A health benefits manager, an informatics specialist, a robotics engineer, a physician, and a chain drugstore executive. Yep. Before we hear from any of these witnesses, perhaps I should explain, for the benefit of this jury, how this court works. This is the court of public opinion. We have no trial lawyers, thank God, uh, just witnesses and me, the judge. And of course, there has to be a jury. Except that in this case, the public is the jury. I will listen to the witnesses for both sides of this case, tell you what I think, and then have the judge leave the judgment up to you, the public. Clerk, call the first witness. The court calls Everett Macon. Your Honor, I'm a healthcare benefits manager of a large telecommunication firm. We employ over 100,000 people in three western states and 50,000 people nationwide. I believe I represent all large employees in this country when I, when, I, when I say that we are desperately in a struggle to remain competitive with foreign rivals, both from the Pacific Rim nations and Western and Central Europe. One of our major expenses is the cost of healthcare benefits for our employees, which we have great difficulty in managing. We have taken a hard look at these for the past few years at the prescription benefits. This item alone costs us $9 million per year, and that's based on the best plan we have been able to negotiate with the managed care program. What does this have to do with pharmacy? Well, Your Honor, we frankly don't see what the value pharmacists add to the process of distributing medications to our employees. We think that we could reduce our cost by $3 million per year, and we could just eliminate the requirement that prescription be handled through pharmacists. And we could change the protectionist laws that require the pharmacist dispensing prescriptions and allow this process to be automated using technical personnel, we think we could total yeah. health care costs in the United States could be reduced by about five billion just by eliminating pharmacists. Why don't you just simply eliminate prescription coverage on your drug plans? Well, we'd love to, Your Honor, but that gets into union politics, being able to compete with other firms, that kind of thing. Who's next, clerk? I call Elizabeth Harper to the stand. Miss <laughs> Harper, what do you do and what is your interest in this case? Your Honor, I am a systems engineer in an informatics company. <clears throat> we design information systems for healthcare organizations including networks for physicians. We have developed a decision-supported system for the use of physicians based on internet technology for the, um, yeah, <laughs> um, that eliminates the need for expert advice from um, other professionals such as clinical nutritionists, nurse specialists, and pharmacists. Each physician can just grab their laptop, and they should be able to use our expert system to provide total patient care. But frankly, we have run into several roadblocks with these pharmacists who seem to think that their, um, prim their primary interest is just to protect their jobs. We don't really need them. They have convinced the data processing managers in um, their organizations that they need to have routine interactions with physicians on drug <coughs> therapy issues such as establishing <laughs> outcome objectives and indicators, reviewing drug orders for safety, appropriateness and cost effectiveness, and reviewing data related to the patient's response to treatment. Your Honor, technology already exists that can do all of these things. We think pharmacists are just being protective of their labor-intensive jobs, and we are asking the court to rule against them. 
we can do the job much faster, much more cost effectively, oh, with, with, with less issues. If, to if, technolo if technology can do all this, then why do we even need physicians? Oh, I'm working on that one, Your Honor. <laughs> you seem very confident in the accuracy of your information and your so-called expert systems. What is the source of this information you use, and how can you be certain that all users are at the level to apply it intelligently? Isn't it conceivable that one mistaken piece of information in your system could harm untold number of patients if there's no one else involved in evaluating it? Your Honor, we use a reliable information system obtained from recognized authorities, like clinical pharmacology. If there is an occasional error that results in an isolated case of patient injury, that really has to be looked at in terms of overall cost of benefit ratio. I see. Who's next? Your Honor, I now call Norman Ringwald, a robotics engineer. <laughs> and their state regulatory boards to protect their archaic role as manual material providers. I represent an industry that is prepared to automate the entire drug preparation, packaging, labeling, and distribution system right down to the patient's home or hospital bedside. And we think we can do the job a lot more cost effectively than the way it is done now. If we overturn some of the laws, that protect the dispensing monopoly held by pharmacists, we could get to the... Oh, come oh, on! Order! 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 In this court. <laughs> we, we could get drugs to patients a lot faster and probably more accurately and less expensively than under the current system. What happens if a prescriber makes a mistake? Wouldn't it be a good idea to have a professional drug expert review the order before it gets to the patient? Your, Your Honor, a good information system can guide the prescriber through a safe and rational choice. Suppose the patient has a question about his or her medication. Well, Your, Your Honor, we will have a 1-800 number in place to answer any questions. That's something to think about, Mr. Ringwald. Next! <laughs> 